All right, allow me, if I may, to begin with a blessing. I send forth this offering of prosperity, knowing that it blesses and multiplies all who are open to receive it. And so it is. Good morning from Miami. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever else you may be in the universe. We are, <clears throat> uh, my name's Randy Gage, and this is a prosperity thought experiment I'm conducting every Saturday. Uh, the moment looks like 10 a.m. Eastern time is the best time, Miami, New York time. Uh, and we just, uh, it's a, it's, I call it the prosperity unchurch because it's not a church or religion. It's just a community of prosperity conscious people who want to study the principles of prosperity, circulation, generosity, and most importantly, eh, okay, I won't say most importantly, but importantly, also free enterprise. That's why it's not a religion or a church. I really try to run this on uh, the principles of free enterprise and model the, the behavior to model the lessons we talk about each week. Uh, it's done on a love offering basis. I don't charge 35 or $40 a course. I say, I'm just gonna put it out there. And if you get the message and want to support it, please do. Uh, it's randygage.com forward slash go. We set up a special page just for people who want to support the prosperity ministry. Uh, it's on the screen now, thanks to Paula Zaragoza, who uh, helps facilitate this every week. Author of the legendary worldwide bestseller, How to Be a Bulletproof Woman. Uh, in este momento solamente is in Espanol, but if you speak Spanish, that's the uh, book for you to check out for sure. Um, so check in, please, in the comments. Just let me know, hey, who you are and where you're watching from. Um, let's uh, allow me to take you back 35 years, maybe. I'm a st young guy starting out in the direct selling profession, trying to make my way. Uh, been was in the business about five years and only lost money. I was always buying tools and going to training events and um, buying starter kits, but I wasn't making any money. And after about five years, I started to figure a few things out and um, at that time, um, the company I was working with, they had a rank called supervisor. That was like the first uh, criteria that you could hit rank advancement. And I thought, man, if, if people knew how to do this, they'd be much more successful in the business. So I started a supervisor school. And once a month, you know, I would rent a room at the Marriott and people gave like five bucks to, to cover the donuts and the coffee. And I would teach this supervisor school. And then people from other lines started asking if they could come. And then people started traveling to it. And then somebody asked me, could I, you know, if I, if they paid my ticket, could I teach it to their team in Chicago? And one, lo and behold, I get a, a call from this couple way up, the top income earners in the company. And they say, hey, we've heard about this supervisor school that you're running down in Miami. And we see you're breaking a lot of supervisors. Would, you know, can we bring you to Sacramento, California and have you teach this to our team. Let me just make uh, Jorge Melendez has joined the chat. So let me make him a co-host, Jorge and Jose Lopez, who's also here in the room. They conduct the Spanish version of this uh, presentation every uh, Saturday, a few hours after this one. 
one of you guys, if you would put that link up in the chat. So Spence and Shivani Pak, this was the name of this couple. So they call me and they're like the, you know, Starfleet commander rank at the top of the company. And they want little old me to come and teach their team. So I'm so honored and I accept their gracious invitation and they fly me to California. And the night before I'm going to conduct the training, we go out to dinner to get to know each other and chat and kind of plan the day. And a really in, uh, interesting dynamic for all of you who are on the study of prosperity, on the pathway, right? Interesting dynamic happens. I did at that dinner what I pretty much did anytime I went to dinner, which I pretty much did anytime I was in conversation with somebody, which was I was regaling them with the stories of all the difficulties in my life, all of the drama and all of the trauma, because that's what I did at that level, at that stage of consciousness in my life. I was a professional victim. So that was what my social calendar looked like, is I would meet with my friends who were all professional victims, and we would regale each other with our stories. You know, the power company cut off our lights, and the, the landlord was evicting us, and, you know, they would tell you their tragedy, and you would tell them your tragedy, and if they had a better tragedy than you did, that would piss you off. So subconsciously you would you would work the next week to try to manifest a worse tragedy so you could get more sympathy the next time well, all this is happening on a, a on not even subconscious level this is unconscious level for me right it's just that was my state of mind at that point of my life i'm probably like uh, i don't know 25 years old, 27 years old or something. I've been broke my whole life. I've been a victim my whole life. I've been miserable my whole life. I mean, this is all I know. Um, so consciously, I've joined this business because I want to become wealthy. But subconsciously, I have all of this programming that money is bad and rich people are evil and I don't want to be a bad person. Um, so I'm, I'm, forever being a profession, professional victim and sabotaging myself, but I have no idea that I'm doing this. So we're having this lovely dinner and I'm like, and then I had this new guy and he bought this big order on the 30th of the month, but his credit card was declined and we didn't know it because back this is before the internet, right? You mailed in checks or you sent in a credit card. And you didn't know instantly if the order was approved. And uh, so it's like, oh, and his credit card was declined and we didn't find out after. So I, he didn't qualify as one of my legs. So I didn't qualify as executive and I lost $800 and commissions and just whining the whole night of all this drama and trauma going on in my life. And they're very gracious and they're listening intently to all of this. And we get out to the car and uh, they're going to take me to my hotel. And they had a beautiful red Mercedes convertible and, 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 um, <clears throat> Spence was on the driver's side and I was on the other side and I was just opening the door so Shivani could get in. And he looked across the car at me and he said very sweetly, Randy, have you given any thought to what you might be doing to manifest all of this bad stuff happening in your life? And Time stood still. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I must have looked at him like he was eating spiders or something. 
I was just staring at him speechless, grinding my molars, thinking, has this son of a bitch not listened to anything I've just been saying for the last hour and a half? Did he not hear all of the, the bad things that have happened to me? Did, does he not understand that I'm an innocent victim? How, how could he, I, I thought this guy was a nice guy. How could he ask a question like that? And, you know, I don't even know what I said back, but I'm sure I mumbled some incoherent nonsense, but that just had me grinding my molars for days. I kept thinking about this question because I really respected him a great deal. This, this couple, they had, they had really created an amazing business. They had a wonderful lifestyle. They were very spiritual people. I respected them on every level. And I was just gobsmacked that he would ask such a question. Uh, and I'm telling you all this to set the stage for this lesson today, which is the 10 truths on getting rich. Because I don't want you to do what I did. Uh, although you could do what I did if you come to the final answer that I developed, right? Which was, so for days I'm grinding my molars. <laughs> How could he ask me this question? Like I had anything to do with any of this. And, but you know, I'm ruminating and ruminating on it. And I'm saying, okay, I had this, you know, at that point was probably seven, eight negative dysfunctional relationships in a row, experience and all kinds of health challenges, business failure after business failure. I have acute social anxiety, um, just, uh, you know, my life is complete and I'm broke, right? And I've been broke my whole life. My whole family's poor. Everyone I know is poor. I'm a victim. Everyone I know is a victim. So I'm reflecting on all this. And then I finally ask the question that liberated me from poverty to prosperity. And that question was, okay, and all these negative relationships and health challenges and business failures and setbacks, was there one person who was always at the scene of the crime? And when you ask yourself a question like that, it's either the most brutal um, experience of your life or it's a breakthrough experience of your life and in my case I chose to make that the breakthrough experience that I would use that for illumination for insight that I could gain wisdom from the answer of that question of recognizing that I really did I, I was a co-creator in the chaos that was my life and I'm gonna share 10 truths about getting rich. And I used those two words, getting rich, very mindfully, because we don't usually talk that way in prosperity circles, right? We talk about abundance and prosperity, but we don't talk about money too much. And we don't talk about getting rich too much. You know, we like to make it a little more palatable and talk about acquiring wealth or developing net worth um, because there's so much garbage out there at the get rich quick space, right? Um, and I don't want to play that game. You know, I could, I could put this on, you know, I could stream this on Facebook, how to get rich. And we could have, uh, uh, 20,000 views in three hours. Right. I don't want to do that. That's why I never broadcast. I don't stream this live on my YouTube channel. I don't stream this live on my Facebook pages. 
or Instagram or anywhere else um, because I would just attract thousands of uh, victims, thousands of entitlement mentality people, thousands of people who are looking for the shortcut for how do they get rich without having to make the personal transformation that getting rich requires that living a prosperous life requires. Um, so, but I wanted to get your attention this week that, that you really understood that I, I'm not gonna talk so much about health and really, you know, we did a whole show on relationships a couple of weeks ago. You can always go back and watch that. We've looked at a lot of the, the bigger, broader, holistic part of prosperity. Um, but today I want to talk about, so I'm going to do kind of a back to back this week, next week. Today is 10 truths about getting rich. And then next week, we're going to look at the best, fastest ways to get out of debt. And that may be the end of the crusade for me. I don't know, you know, I don't, I'm, you know, I, I don't, we're not seeing the sharing that I would like to see of the show. You know, I told you guys my vision for the show, but my vision is irrelevant. It's your vision for the show. If you guys don't share it and want to tell your family and friends about it and get it out there, then it's not important what my vision is. It's your vision. I'm doing it for you guys, right? This is a labor of love for me. And you see, when we get into this lesson, I worked on this lesson. I mean, I've been calling up my friends the last couple of days. Man, this thing I'm doing on Saturday, this is going to be lit. This is going to be straight fire. Because I think these truths transcend so much wisdom uh, that's required in, in order to make that trans transformation from prosperity to wealth. Um, and so for, but again, I, I don't, I, I don't see the kind of, by the way, I, I want to thank, I see Esther is on again, like she always is. She's a big financial supporter of the show. show Stefan Joseph sent his uh, contribution in this morning. Uh, I wish I could pull up a, a couple of other people sent him in before the show even starts, but I don't see the big groundswell of the, the people with $1, $2, that say, okay, hey, I'm, I'm, I don't have the money yet, but I'll send a dollar to support the show. I'm gonna share the YouTube replay with five friends, or I sent the the podcast to five friends. You know, I'm not seeing that, so I don't, you know, I, I don't know that I'm gonna continue this, but I'm gonna do this lesson today, and I'm gonna do next week for sure, which is the best, fastest way to get out of debt, and then we'll evaluate it and take it from there. Um, you guys saved the show once, but I don't want it to be a one-time thing or that I have to beat you up every week to get you to share the show. That's not the principle of prosperity. The principle of prosperity is circulating prosperity, right? So let's dig in to these 10 truths. And again, I, 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 when I share these, let me think how I want to say this because I don't want to affirm anything negative. Give me a sec. <laughs> Um, here's how I will phrase it. If you are at the consciousness that I was when I went to that dinner in Sacramento, your default knee-jerk reaction for some of these truths is going to be that you say, oh, okay, that was fine for Randy, but that doesn't apply for me because I have special circumstances. I, I'm, I'm being victimized in a certain way that Randy probably doesn't understand. So, you know, maybe that's good advice for other people, but it doesn't really apply to me. I'm beseeching you not to allow that to happen to you because I promise you these 10 truths are transformational. 
they're universal and they apply to us all on a lot of levels. Truth number one, 10 truths about getting rich. Truth number one, you can't be treated for prosperity. You must be willing to receive it. Poverty isn't a disease. Poverty consciousness is a disease, but it's a mental disease. Just like low self-esteem or narcissism or personality disorders or addictions, right? We, we have glitches in the matrix of our thought process that can cause us difficulties in life and can prevent us from manifesting a life of health, hope, happiness, harmony, prosperity. Uh, and one of those is poverty consciousness, which you get programmed with. I don't believe you're born with it. I do believe we get programmed with it, with all of the memes that we've talked about on many of the shows. Money is bad, rich people are evil, it's spiritual to be poor, you have to be a bad parent to become successful. Uh, successful companies exploit the workers. There's a lot of that kind of programming, which begins at two, three years old. You know, um, you guys know I'm always talking about the movies and the TV shows and the books and the subliminal programming. I watched F9 last night, the, the latest in the Fast Furious um, uh, franchise. And... <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's, you know, obviously you don't watch Fast Furious movies if you're looking for uh, plausible, realistic plot lines based on any kind of reality. I mean, they're just total escapism, summer blockbuster, have fun, eat some popcorn, go to the movies. Um, and that it, it fills the need of that. It's really a fun film. And uh, they brought Han back, who's my favorite. So I'm happy about that. Um, but God, I was just laying in bed after I watched that last night thinking, man, the poverty consciousness in this film that I just watched, you know, the way they portray wealthy people, the, the villains were all, the, you know, these very wealthy people you know, out to control the world. I mean, it, it's just so formulaic, so predictable, so template. Uh, and that's the programming we're all exposed to. So you develop this confirmation bias, which is uh, money is bad and rich people are evil. And then Nobody can treat you for prosperity. There's no medicine we can give you. There's no exercise we can give you. There's no um, knowledge we can force upon you. You have to be willing to receive it. You have to get exposed to prosperity consciousness in an ever increasing dose. That's why I do these every week and I have my blog and my podcast and all the other stuff that I do. Because if we can just crack the window open a little and let in some of that fresh air, some of that prosperity consciousness, you can get to a place where you will receive it. You will allow yourself to be prosperous. You will allow yourself to be healthy. You will allow yourself to be happy. Um, one of the first books I wrote was one called Accept Your Abundance. And when people ask me, you know, where do I start? I say, start with that book. It's the purple one, cover, Accept Your Abundance. It's millions of copies. It's in dozens of, not dozens, but it's in at least 15 or 16 different languages. Uh, it's very inexpensive. And if you can't afford even uh, the $7 or whatever it costs, believe me, do some Google searches. There's pirate copies all over for less money. There's free downloads. I've put it up on sites in the past for free than the PDF for people who really can't afford it. 
Um, so if you search around, you can find it. Even if you have zero money, you could pay for it. Search for accept your abundance and read that because you really must be willing to receive prosperity. Truth number two, leverage is the number one superpower for um, attracting money, for creating wealth. Leverage is the number one superpower for attracting money. We can talk about systemic bias, right? If you're a woman, there is more of a bias against your success than if you're a man. Here in the United States, if you're a person of color, there's a systemic uh, 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 challenge to you that somebody not of color doesn't have. In South Africa, it can be just the opposite, by the way, uh, depending where you live. Depending where you live, your ethnicity, your religion, your gender, your sexuality, these are all things that can be used against you and cause a a more difficult pathway to becoming wealthy. That's just the truth. You know, anyone who denies that is living in denial. We all have different challenges that we face. So you have young versus old people say, well, I'm too young. Nobody takes me seriously, or I'm too old, or I don't have the education. And We've used a lot of those either or scenarios in the past, young versus old, educated versus not as well educated, wealthy versus poor. But what I'm telling you in the new world in 2021 and beyond, um, forget all those other labels, the real difference maker uh, in, in creating wealth is, 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 is leveraged versus non-leveraged. So if you're not leveraged, means you trade hours for money. You go to Taco Bell, you work for six hours, you get paid for six hours. You work in a sweatshop in Asia, you're uh, sewing garments or making sneakers for 12 hours and you get five dollars when you leave and it's exact proportion you trade hours for money there's no leverage in that if you write a song and get royalties if you write a book and get royalties if you're in direct selling where you can leverage your time if you're in real estate where you can leverage your money if you're in information or e-commerce where you can leverage your knowledge now we're talking about wisdom i'm sorry now we're talking about we are talking about wisdom but more specifically we're talking about leverage the poor you know the difference between the wealthiest people and the poorest people you're always going to find leverage as the 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 distinction, the differentiation between the two. Number three, prosperity is first created in the mind. Prosperity is first created in the mind. Great wealth, great success, they fall into the category of pretty much all major accomplishments in the sense that they are created twice. First, they're created in the mind of the dreamer. And only secondly, are they manifested on the physical realm? Elon Musk first had a dream that we should be a multi-planetary species. That's the first time that wealth was created in the ethers. And then just as Reverend Charles Fillmore taught, the way we manifest wealth is by transferring it from the ethers through the power of ideas. Nobody has a money shortage. What they really have is an idea shortage. <clears throat> so Elon creates the idea that we need to be a multi-planetary species. And then only then does he manifest SpaceX on the physical realm. 
He has the dream or the idea that cars can be carbon neutral and we don't need to burn fossil fuels. So he creates that wealth first in the, uh, the paradigm of the ethers and only then does he found Tesla, the car company. So pr true prosperity is always created in the mind first. The fourth one, maybe I'll get some pushback here. <laughs> Uh, your wealth grows at the same rate you do. Or we can say your wealth grows at the same speed you grow. Is somebody writing these in the uh, comments? That would be wonderful if they did what, you know, they each of these. So number four, your wealth grows at the same rate as you do. Your wealth is determined by the level of your self-esteem, which is determined by the level of your prosperity consciousness. And I, the, the analogy that works best for this is the size of the window through which you see the world. You know, as a, as a professional speaker, we create demo videos, right? So if a meeting planner is looking for somebody to speak at their convention, they'll say, hey, let me see your demo video. So of course, like all professional speakers, I have a demo video. The difference of my demo video is it's been watched more than 250,000 times. And why? I think a big reason is the content and one of the, a, a, a fun part of the content is the story I tell about flying uh, from the U.S. to uh, Tahiti to go to this uh, resort where I have a bungalow on the water and you have a little trap door in the floor of the bungalow and you feed the fish uh, through the floor. And they just, you drop a few breadcrumbs and just whoosh. There's like 20 fish, red, purple, green, yellow, spotted, striped. I mean, it's fish like you've never seen, the most beautiful tropical fish. And the water is crystal clear, pure, crystal clear. You can jump off your balcony down in the water and you're just among all these fish. And I'm telling this story, flying over there on a big Air France jet, um, and the difference, you know, and I make a joke about, I look behind a curtain and there was a prison barge. And of course, the joke is the prison barge I'm talking about was the economy section of the plane. And I tell, and this is what's on this demo video. We have a little vignette of this speech that I was given wherever I was given it, um, where I talk about uh, discovering the economy section, which I thought was a prison barge, you know, like where the workers are chained together, working the side of the road with the guys with the shotguns. Um, and then, I, of course, I say I do some research and I find out the difference between going to Fiji in the first class and the economy was $12,000 or whatever it was at that time. And I say, so imagine this, you got this 10 hour flight you can go to an economy for $700 uh, each for two of you, let's say 1,400, or you can go the two of you in first class and it's 15 grand. So it's, you know, $12,000 difference or whatever the difference is. And I say, okay, think about that, a 10 hour flight. And I say, who in their right mind would not spend the 15 grand to be in first. And of course, the audience is expecting me to say, who would waste $12,000 for a 10 hour flight? And so I catch them in their poverty consciousness. I point to them the size of the window through which they are viewing the world. Because if you're like my mother, right? If I told my mother that I could buy a plane ticket for $700, but instead I spent 
$7,000, she would slap me into next week. Okay. She, she would just like, how could you possibly waste that money? Like, you know, if, I mean, if she knew, I can never tell her the price of things I buy or do because she would, poor woman would have a heart attack and die. Just a joke. Let me not affirm that. Right. Um, but that is, she just views the world through a different window than I do. Right. She's always going to be looking, okay, where's the coupons? Where's the discount? Where can we save money on that? Um, and her, her default, the window that she views the world is through tells her the way to live a more prosperous life is to reduce your expenses, to find ways to buy things cheaper, right? And that is a viable path. If you're an ascetic, for instance, that you may believe that. Um, I am definitely not an ascetic, right? So I view the world through a different window and I say, well, the more prosperity I can attract, then the greater uh, health and happiness and harmony I can create around me in my life. So I think, well, okay, how can I solve problems or add values to create an extra $15,000 so I can buy those two first class tickets to Tahiti? And that's a different size window through which you see the world. And I didn't go from where my mother is to where I am in a swoop. It was a process that took me years, right? Because you slowly expand the size. Let me cancel that, cancel that. I don't want to firm slowly because um, maybe you're going to do it faster than I did. Uh, what I believe is that our prosperity consciousness expands in a gradual process. For most people, or up until this point, I wasn't able to just snap my fingers and expand it at once. I went through a procession, right? Because the other thing that happens is you say, why would you spend that extra $12,000? Do you know how many is starving children in Africa we could feed with that? How many whales we could save? How many rainforests we could save? Um, but that's poverty consciousness because that is based on the assumption that you can spend 15 grand to go to Fiji and have their Tahiti and have the trip of your lifetime, or you could help the starving children in Africa. Whereas prosperity consciousness says, I can do both. I can, uh, when I find something that really enhances my life, I can, I'm a tall guy, I'm like 6'2". Okay, I don't fit in economy airplane seats. My knees are up against the seat in front of me. As soon as they lean back, I'm gonna be in a wheelchair. I'll be so pretzeled up, right? Um, so it's important for me. I wanna fly comfortable, right? I want, and I fly for work, right? I'm speaking all over the world, Fifth, more than 50 countries, right? So I'm taking 15 hour flights to Africa, 23 hour flights to South Africa. I mean, and 15 hour flights to Asia and Australia and whatever. I want to arrive comfortable. I want to sleep well on the plane. I want to eat well. I want to arrive in a good mental state and be able to contribute to the audiences I'm speaking to. That isn't going to happen if I'm doing the middle seat in row 35 on a 15 hour red eye flight to Sydney. Okay, it's just, so I make that a priority for me. If I was four foot six, maybe I would say, hey, I can do economy. So you choose for you, maybe I like sports cars, right? So I buy a lot of exotic cars. I like watches, I have lots of watches. It may be a totally different thing for you, but you'll find the areas of your life that bring, you know, enhance your life. And those are the ones you will choose to see the world through a bigger window. Those are the ones you will choose to splurge and, 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 and lavish on yourself. And you can do that without harming others and not helping others and being selfish and greedy. You can do this in a prosperous way. But all of this has to do with the window that you see the world. And so 
you have to grow for your prosperity to grow. Because if you're just like, okay, I got to make more money. I got to make more money. You're not adding any value to the universe. So the universe is not likely to reward you with more money, more responsibility, more health, more love, more harmony, more whatever. But when you are growing as a person and then you're looking for how do I add more value, then your prosperity grows as you grow. This is kind of related to number five, and you've heard me say this many times. True creation of wealth is accomplished in three ways. Adding value, solving problems, and envisioning possibilities. Repeat it. True, true creation of wealth is accomplished in three ways. Uh, adding value, solving problems, envisioning possibilities. Um, that's it. Those are the ways you manifest wealth. So you say, how do I get rich? Very simple. You look for any occasion where you can add value to the equation, where you can you know, add value. If you can show a Toyota how to manufacture their cars and save $100 on every car, that amounts to billions of dollars for them. And they would happily pay you a couple million dollars consulting fee, right? solving problems. If you can show, um, you know, a hotel, how, you know, that's sinking because they're built on a landfill, how they can, you know, uh, support their building better to make it last longer. If you can show them how they can, uh, you know, they have a problem with people complaining about room service or people complaining about, uh, whatever, the, and you can show them, hey, I can make, I can show you how to stop having dissatisfied customers. They will gratefully, lovingly, joyfully throw money at you to make that problem go away. See this tooth right here? I had a root canal in it the other day, okay? 2,000 hot, nasty bucks to get a root canal done, okay? But let me tell you, when you need a root canal, because you have an abscess tooth, you don't say, where can I find an early bird special? Are there any dentists with coupons for root canals? No, you say, doctor, I have this throbbing pain and I want the pain to go away. So they solve your problem and I lovingly, joyfully, gratefully threw $2,000 at him to make my problem go away. <laughs> okay, that's just, this is how value is created. Now he planned for that, right? He went to school, he became a dentist, he studied for years, he took out thousands of dollars in student loans, probably to become a dentist, right? But then he, he created a skill set that allows him to solve problems for people like you and me. And so we gratefully pay him to make those problems go away. And then when you envision possibilities like Stephen Jobs did with the iPad, right? Nobody, the iPad didn't exist. Nobody wanted one because they didn't know what it was. But he envisioned the possibility of this hybrid thing that's bigger than a phone, but lighter than a laptop. And when people saw it, they said, oh, I want one of those. That's envisioning possibilities. Numero seis, the only free cheese is in the mousetrap. This is a truth about getting rich. The only free cheese is in the mousetrap. Because, you know, you could say, well, if I go and rob a casino and get $30 million, I'm rich. But no, you're probably going to get arrested and you're probably going to go to prison and spend 10 years in prison. So you didn't really get rich. You tried to snatch the free cheese. But when you did, the mousetrap slammed shut on you. The only, nobody's given free cheese. 
They're just not. Even I'm not offering free cheese, even though I'm, there's no charge for this, I'm doing it for free, right? I don't make anybody pay for this. But if I don't see people supporting it, circulating the prosperity, then I'll stop doing it and there won't be any more cheese, right? This is how it is. When, you know, this is the people in your life that you have relationships with. If you don't reciprocate with the love they give you, the support they give you, the empathy they give you, at some point they say, I don't want to be in relationship with this person because they only try to take. They don't give as well as receive. And originally that was going to be the lesson today was giving and receiving, right? So now we're looking at the broader context of that, that the only free cheese is in the mousetrap. So stop looking for the $27 ebook that's going to show you how to be a billionaire in 10 days. It's, it's, there's a mousetrap. Be willing to do the work to become the person that lives prosperously. Numero siete, prosperity substance is infinite. Meaning any true element of prosperity, and I think we did a whole show on this, one of the early lessons. You know, there's no finite amount of love. The more love you circulate, the more love you give back. The more hugs you give away, the more hugs you give back. This is just, again, it's the law of giving and receiving, right? This permeates through everything. Um, and the, the true prosperity, like money, remember money is just a medium of exchange. So whether we're talking about dollars, pounds, pesos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, doesn't matter. These are all just uh, uh, mediums of exchange. When we solve problems, add value or envision possibilities, people will exchange money to us, right? So that's infinite. There is no limit to the amount of money that you can manifest because money is infinite because money is just a meme. It's a meme created by society because we need labels. We need, we need concepts that our mind can process. And it's just, instead of saying, okay, if I mow your lawn, can I trade you for a coconut? two pineapples and a tomato, we, it's easier to say, hey, for 20 bucks, I'll mow your lawn. And then you take the 20 bucks and you go buy the pineapple and the tomato, and the Britney Spears concert tickets that you wanna get, right? Um, true prosperity, money, health, relationships, harmony, love, hugs, empathy, they're all infinite. Number eight, um, debt imprisons you or empowers you. This is a really important truth that a lot of, of people in poverty haven't comprehended because they are trying to exist through debt and they're doing debt that imprisons them. If I take upon debt because I see an eight unit apartment building that I can buy that, you know, selling for $800,000 and I can put down $100,000 of my cash and I can borrow $700,000 on a 20 year mortgage and I've run the numbers and I know what even with the, you know, projected occupancy rate uh, how much re uh, revenue that uh, apartment building is going to generate, I can use that $700,000 to make a couple million dollars, right? I'm using debt to empower me because I'm using debt for, here's this word again, leverage. When you're using debt for leverage, you're probably producing wealth, when you're not getting leverage out of debt, you're probably imprisoning yourself. Oh, I saw a commercial on TV. They said I can get a brand new living room set and no payments until next year. 
And in my ratty old sofa, I'd love to trade it in. Those furniture and that commercial looks so beautiful and I don't have to pay right now. Let me get that furniture set on credit. You've just imprisoned yourself because now you have that debt hanging over you next year before you've even earned that money, you're already in debt for it. That's imprisoning you. Wealthy people, listen to me carefully, peeps. Wealthy people learn how to employ debt for leverage or they stay away from it. Number nine. You work for money or money works for you. You work for money or money works for you. Uh, poor people work for money. Wealthy people have money work for them. I mean, I, I don't know how to say it in any more uh, of a, a, a simple way than that is um it, it just, it is what it is that, um, and let me get my screen open here. I'm just trying to catch up on the comments and all of that. Um, yeah, okay, good, good, good. Um, your money works for you or you're working for money. And you say, okay, I get it, Gage, but you don't understand. I don't have enough money for my money to work for me. I'm working at Taco Bell. I'm getting $11 an hour. I have babysitter. I have insurance. I have, you know, rent. I need groceries. I get it. So you're, you're working for money. I spent the first 30 years of my life working for money. But at some point, you develop the prosperity consciousness and you say, okay, I'm working at Taco Bell and that I, all I'm doing is surviving. So I'm going to drive Lyft one night a week, get an extra $50 that I can invest. My money works for me. Or, hey, okay, I'm working all day at Taco Bell. I'm going to pick two nights a week. I'm going to deliver pizza for Pizza Hut. And I'm going to make an extra $70 a week that I can invest working for me. And you just keep increasing that and changing the equation so you have more money working for you and less time you working for money. And then eventually you get to the point where your money is working for you more than you're working for money. And then you will be prosperous for the rest of your life. You will never have to worry about money again. C'est compris, mes amis? Do you really get that? Because once you get to that point where your money is working for you more than you're working for money, then you never have to worry, but you got the money thing out of the way. And you hear me say that all the time. I want you guys to get the money thing out of the way. All right. And number 10, this is going to shock some of you, and this will liberate some of you and hopefully all of you. Your net worth at 50 years old was predetermined by the time you were 10 years old. Your net worth at 50 years old was predetermined by the time you were 10 years old. Here's the caveat. Unless you mindfully reset your programming, right? Don't forget this second part, unless you mindfully reset your programming. Now, maybe you are born into the Walton family, uh, Sam Walton, who founded Walmart, and you're his uh, daughter, and he left a trust fund for you of $80 million. So we already know what your net worth is going to look like at 50, right? That was predetermined when you were 10, when he made the will. 
because you developed a certain set of beliefs. You have this window through which you see the world. Uh, you have core foundational beliefs. So he left this nest egg for you. He prepared for your future. And we know, okay, when you're 50, you're going to be worth uh, $92 million because he left you 80 and the money's working for you. And by then it's going to be worth 92 million. Unless you mindfully change your thought process. And you say, hey, I'm a trust fund baby. I can snort Coke. I can go to Ibiza every weekend. I can fly around on private jets. I can get private tables at Club 11 in Miami for $50,000 a night. I can piss away all my money on drugs and sex and rock and roll. Um, and then you've reset your mind and you're not going to be worth $92 million when you're right. But this is for most people. You're what your net worth, we could estimate it out based on your consciousness of 10 years old, how you feel real, you know, those, those six categories I talk about in that book cover you see behind me, Radical Rebirth, you know, money and success, health and wellness, marriage and relationships, sex and sexuality, uh, work and career, God and religion, right? You create these core foundational beliefs before you're 10 years old, they're set in all the major areas. And for most people, that's how they end up their life. That's why I say, I can, I could spend probably 20 minutes in conversation with a, a, a 10 year old and give you a really accurate projection of what their net worth is gonna be at 50 years old. I really could. Just like I can talk to people at 30 and 40 and know what they're going to be like 20 years from now, 30 years from now. I can tell exactly where they're going to be unless they mindfully reset their programming. Unless they mindfully choose, okay, I'm going to build a bigger, bigger, bigger window through which I can view the world. And that's the magic of what we're all about. That's the magic of what this lesson is. All right, Paula, would you put up the screen again? It's time to support the work. If you want to see it continue, if you believe in the principles of prosperity, two things you got to do. Show me your support. Just uh, it doesn't matter if it's a dollar or five dollars. If you tithe, if you send $20,000, whatever it is, you show me you value the work and you want to support it and you want to grow it is number one. And number two, you got to support it outside of this room. You got to share the replay goes up on Prosperity TV, the YouTube channel every Monday night. Uh, the replay goes up every Monday morning on the Power Prosperity podcast. Rate them, like them, share them. When I put up the announcement for the show, tell your friends about it. When we, okay, you know, next week, the topic is the fastest, best way to get out of debt. It's going to be 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturday, a week from today. So who do you know that you think they really need to get out of debt? They really would like to get out of debt. They're open to prosperity consciousness. Create a watch party with them. Start talking to them right now. Make plans. Five, five, find five friends that you'll bring into the group next week and watch it together. And then you can do a study group after and work together for each of you to help get out of debt as quickly as possible. You know, my vision for this is we're going to run it like a 12 step group. It should support itself. Everybody should say, whatever, it's a dollar, two dollars, whatever. I'm going to contribute. I'm going to keep, I want this group going because the, the consciousness of the group is expanding my consciousness. I know that if I go there every week or I watch the replay every week or I listen to the podcast every week, I know incrementally it's going to help me expand the size of the window through which I watch the world. I see the world. I view my world and my place in it. Okay, here's your assignment. How am I doing on time? Wow, it's already the top of the hour. All right, here's your assignment and it's really important. Look at the list. 
decide which truths did you reject? <laughs> of those 10, were there any that is it? Okay, well, but number seven isn't really true for me because I was born with spina bifida and my mother was a cocaine addict and um, I was in a car accident when I was 17 and chopped my hand off and uh, I was abused. Is there, did you do any rejection of any one of those 10? You need to know that that is the truth that's holding you back. That's what's keeping you from getting rich. So your assignment is which of these 10 truths did you reject? And then you need to go back and figure out why you shouldn't reject it and that it does hold true for you. And hopefully we'll have time next week and we can chat about it and you know check in on people's uh, assignment. Um, and if you accept all 10, great, beautiful. Just <clears throat> work on putting that into practice in your, in your world. Create that bigger window. All right, remember, next week, same bad time, same bad channel, 10 a.m. Eastern time, uh, Miami, New York time. And the topic is going to be the fastest, best way to get out of debt. Peace. Love you guys.